evening. Welcome to our live session. My name is Sandra and I am here with Serge. We are the co-founders of Here Gift. How's everyone doing and where is everyone from? Now, before we start anything, I'd like to let you know that we have a little contest for tonight. So, at the end of this live session, we will pick at random a person from the comment section to win a $50 gift card on Here Gift. You can, yes! <laughs> you can use this gift card for anything accessories, batteries, even a spare model for yourself, or you can gift it to someone else so they can receive the gift of hearing as well. So, all you have to do is watch the session until the end, of course, and drop us a line, whether it be um, saying hi, a question, telling us where you're from, anything that you have in mind. Perfect. And uh, while you do that, I will briefly introduce this initiative that we have at Here Gift. In 2020, we want to be more transparent and we want to be more connected with you. Part of that will be weekly live sessions where me and Serge will go online, live on Facebook. We will answer your questions, we will give you news, we will give you updates, whether that would be hearing hear gift news and updates or hearing loss in general news and updates. We will also have live Q&As. We will give you the opportunity to ask us any questions you have and then we will answer them. Cool, sounds good, right? Sounds great. <laughs> Perfect. Let's do it. Awesome. So to kick it off, we uh, thought that we would start with our most popular FAQ. We literally get this question every single day and it is, what is the difference between our three ITC models, the V5, the V6, and the V7? I know that it was a much simpler life about a year or two ago when we had mostly BTE models and mm -hmm. then we had the V5. But now, yeah. uh, you know what? Times are changing. Everybody seems to want the in the canal uh, pieces because they're discreet, they're small, and um, in our opinion, they have been better, especially the hair gift ones. So we will uh, share the differences and uh, we will also share how to optimize them for your specific hearing loss. After that, we will give you um, some company updates for 2020. We have something super excited that we released and posted yesterday. And of course, at the end, we will um, share the winner with you. So again, leave us any comments, any questions that you may have. I know that we can't uh, we can't turn on captions for the live video, and I know that's obviously a little bit of an issue, um, given our environment here. But if there's something that you can hear, if you want us to clarify anything, drop us a line, and we'll uh, try our best to answer it on the spot. We will also have the video pinned on our Facebook page, so you can watch it in replay afterwards too. And of course, if you don't know who we are, we are Hear Gift. You can go to heargift.com. You can find more information about us and about our products. Awesome. So let's talk about the three ITC models that we currently carry in store, the V5, the V6, and the V7. And I'm going to start with the V5. That was actually the first ITC model that we brought uh, back in 2017, I believe. Yes. Perfect, yeah. And uh, now let's actually back up a little bit. In terms of the similarities between the models, all three are in the canal. They're very small and very discreet and uh, all three of them are suited for mild to severe hearing loss up to 70 decibels. They also have background reducing noise features. In terms of differences, the V5 model is um, best suited for someone that really just wants to hear better. They don't need a lot of other features, they don't have other issues like ringing in the ear or tinnitus, they simply want a hearing aid, a hearing device to help them hear better so they can enjoy their life better and enjoy their times with their families like they haven't before. So um, we also notice actually a lot of our customers that uh, wear the V5 hearing aid model, they have age-related hearing loss. That's a type of sensory neural hearing loss and it happens with aging due to different factors. It can be um, damage to your cells in your cochlea, they can, um, it can be uh, maybe exposure to loud noises, smoking, certain medications, a lot, a lot of factors affected. Um, and age-related hearing loss, to clarify, it doesn't just happen to senior individuals. People in their 30s and 40s can also be affected by it. 
Um, actually, we have a really cool blog post on our sister website uh, called Hearing Loss Blog. Um, we interviewed um, an audiologist. Actually, she wrote she wrote this piece herself. Um, she wrote a big piece on age-related hearing loss. So she talks about uh, detection, prevention, symptoms, and what treatment options are available. So after this live session, we will send you an email with that blog article link. And again, if you're not um, again, if you're not subscribed to our email list, make sure you drop us the line either via um, email, comment on our website or through phone. Give us your email and we will send you the um, information that, uh, that we promised. Cool. So I think I talked quite a little bit for now. That's, uh, that's just me though. That's, that's how this <laughs> happens. <laughs> but I'll pass the baton to Sajan. He will uh, talk to you about the V6. And the V7, what are the similarities? What are the differences? And he'll focus a little bit on the V7 because it is our newest model. And with the holidays and everything going on in the past couple of months, we haven't really had the opportunity to go on video and talk about the V7 as much as we would have wanted to. So, so Jim, why don't you start? Great. Well, thank you, Sandra. That was a really nice introduction there. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so the V6 and the V7, they are, are middle and are, are high-end hearing devices. Uh, the V6 was basically built as a response to customer feedback that we got about the V5 and the various issues that they had. Uh, we noticed that there were some really common issues uh, with the V5, uh, mostly concerning the feedback or the squealing noise that happens when... Uh, uh, the feedback compression system is not activated properly. So the V6 was really a step in um, advancing that and working on the feedback compression system and actually showing how to uh, use the, the hearing edge properly without having the squealing noise. Um, and then we had the V7 because uh, it was really tough to change the volume on the V5 and the V6, and it requires a really small tool to you to be able to change the volume. However, uh, the nice thing is with the with all these hearing devices is once you set the volume, you pretty much never need to change it again. Like the volume that you set it at can stay uh, because all the devices have uh, a built-in noise suppression. So any background noise, any loud noise that happens, um, the devices automatically suppress that noise, protecting your hearing as well as allowing you to hear speech more clearly. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the V7, uh, one of the main questions that we get because it's a more advanced device is how to change the volume on the V7s because it's a different system than the V5s and the V6s. So on the V7s, we have the push button system. Uh, I'll try to show you here. We also have videos here. on our website too. So if uh, you can't see clearly today, you can head over to our website and see um, yeah. a more in detail. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so the V7, um, there's basically one button that we have to push to change the volume or to change uh, the sound profile or to even put the device to sleep if that's what you prefer to do. Uh, the sleep function, actually now that I mentioned it, it's actually very useful for people that don't like uh, opening and closing the battery doors mm -hmm. because it allows you to turn the hearing aid on and off while the battery is still inside the hearing aid. And to activate the sleep function, all you do is press the, uh, the button for six seconds, I believe, yeah, six seconds, mm -hmm. and that turns the hearing aid off automatically, and then to turn it back on, you just press it for six seconds again, and it turns back on. So the main thing is with regards to the sound profile, so there's three different sound profiles in the V7, along with a tinnitus mode which is technically sound profile number four, mm -hmm. but the first three are um, program one is for high frequency hearing loss, program two is for medium frequency, and program three is for low frequency hearing loss. So the reason we decided to integrate these different sound profiles is because we understand that 
every person has a uh, different type of hearing loss and some people might have uh, medium frequency, some people might have low frequency. However, the only way to really know what loss you have is to go to an audiologist and to get a hearing, um, hearing test done. And then they can show you a chart that displays where your hearing might be going down or where your hearing level is at. Mm -hmm. However, for the vast majority of people that have um, a sensor, sensor neural hearing loss, it's most likely they will have high frequency hearing loss. This comes with age-related hearing loss mm -hmm. as well as any type of hearing damage done by um, going to loud concerts, for example, mm -hmm. or listening, you know, any, any type of really any hearing damage done from external stimuli is typically high frequency hearing damage. So that's why high frequency is our number one program mm -hmm. and it's the default program. So when you first get the hearing aid, you turn it on, it's going to be set to the high frequency mode. So now if you don't know what type of hearing loss you have, we suggest that you cycle to all the programs. So the way you do that is you push the button and you hold it for three to four seconds and you'll hear kind of a little chime and that chime signifies that you've changed to another program. And we suggest you just test out, you know, the medium frequency and the low frequency, see how that works for you. Um, you might even find that certain programs work better in certain environments. And in that case, you can just easily switch back and forth between whatever suits you best. However, we find for about, I would say, 80% of our customers, the program number one, the high frequency program, is the best one for them. That's the one they find the most use useful. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of changing the volume, again, we suggest that you start at the default. The default is usually in a medium volume. So whenever you turn the device on for the first time, it'll start in medium volume. And in order to change the volume, you just press the button for maybe a second. And it'll actually beep and you'll see um, it'll raise the volume for one decibel level. So every time you press the button, it raises at one decibel level, one decibel level. When it gets to the maximum and you press the button, it'll go back to the lowest level. And then as you press, it goes up and up and up. So again, we recommend um, starting at the middle mm -hmm. and then seeing how comfortable that is for you, how, how that volume level works for you. And if you're finding it, maybe it's too uncomfortable or maybe it's being too loud, you can always just cycle through and then go back to the lowest one and then cycle up again until you find a comfortable level. Now, for me personally, I never see a need to change the volume because the background noise suppression system does a really good job of eliminating all the background noise. So even when I'm changing environments, if I'm riding my bike or uh, I'm outside or at a restaurant or something like that, it's always at one constant volume and I, I have no, I never felt any need to change it. However, some people might be more comfortable with, let's say, lowering the volume when they're outside in a busy city and then um, raising the volume when they're in a quiet environment or talking with their friends or their loved ones. Um, so that about covers the, the push button control. Now, I also just want to mention whenever um, we get a lot of customers saying that they have issues with the squealing or the device maybe it works one day and then the next day it just squeals a lot. So I just want to cover some steps that people can use to uh, stop the squealing. So number one, of course, is getting the proper ear dome size. So it really, it needs to be a snug fit in your ear because it has to block out the air surrounding the ear dome for the hearing aid to work properly. So what you want to do is I would start with the smallest ear dome size, try that out. And if it's still, if it's squealing and you feel that it's too loose, 
you would move up a size in the ear dome and then try that one out. It's it should be a snug fit. It, sh it shouldn't be uncomfortable. It shouldn't be painful. Um, you basically you should not feel the hearing aid in your ear um, if possible. You know, and um, one of the things that causes uh, the squealing also a lot is not cleaning the uh, wax stones in in the hearing aid. So. As you use it more and more, um, there's going to be wax buildup in the hearing aid. So, what you want to do is take the um, let's see, take the ear dome off, and this here is the wax dome. And you can use the brush tool to either take the wax out or replace the wax dome with another wax dome, think, like a newer one. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I think on uh, on our website we call it the wax guard. A wax so guard, yeah. Yeah, just so sorry, you're yeah. not confused, it is the wax guard that he's yeah. talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's that. And also, um, you want to try to keep the ear dome um, dry mm -hmm. so it's not wet. Uh, if you sweat a lot or if there's any kind of perspiration on the ear dome, that's also going to cause uh, the squealing as well as having water in your ear or having some kind of condensation in your ear um, You're going to want to try to clean that out mm -hmm. and then put the put the hearing aid in uh, Because again, it needs to have that tight seal with your ears for it to work properly mm -hmm. and yeah, I would say that that about covers it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, our products that come standard were three different ear dome uh, sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, we do find that we have some customers that have extremely small ear canals. So if you start at the smallest one and it just doesn't fit at all and it hurts and um, it's not comfortable, um, either call us or send us an email and we will uh, re um, send you your first uh a pair of extra small uh, ear domes for free. And you can find our contact information on our website. Um, thank you, Serge, that was great. I know that we, like I said, we get this question asked a lot. Um, what's the difference between our ITC models and uh, of course lately between the V6 and the V7 because they are similar. And um, Serge actually also made a very nice comparison chart that you can see on our website. So if you go to heargive.com, you will see one of the buttons at the top is called comparison chart. It has all of our models, the three ITC and the right model that we just launched. I will talk about that one in another session. And uh, you can see there exactly what the differences and the similarities are. And, um, you know, in hopes that it helps you make a better decision when uh, purchasing your hearing aid because um, we well, never know. Just because the product is newer doesn't mean that it's better for you. You may want to choose to go with the V5 or the V6. Um, perfect. So before we leave you today, um, we would like to invite you actually to head on over to our website to the About Us page or on our Facebook fan page, it's just called Hear Gift, um, or on our website heargift.com um, about um, a section, it's at the bottom. We, um, again, in an effort to increase transparency, communication with you and um, engagement, we released uh, a video yesterday of Serge's story of uh, his hearing loss and how he came to decide that Hear Gift needs to happen and Hear Gift um, actually has to happen to help more people change their hearing story. He talks about being a child and um, getting damage to his uh, ear um, hair cells and uh, you know moving to Canada, fleeing civil war. And the left, I'll leave it to you to watch. It's about 10 minutes long, but I really think you're going to enjoy and I really think you're going to um, really understand where our culture comes from um, and where our, I guess, overall perspective um, in the company comes from. And um, again, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whichever is your preferred method of social media. We're going to um, give you more updates, more information, more contests, more videos to come. And we really, really want to engage with you. And um, for the contest today, we're going to um, leave the comment session because I know that right now um, Kathleen was like messaging me. You all know Kathleen, of course. And she's <laughs> saying that some people really want to watch the video, but they don't have time tonight. We're going to actually save it and pin it and leave it on top of the page for the next um, 24 mm -hmm. hours. If you want to leave your comments uh, within the 24 hours, we're going to um, offer that contest to you. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, please let us know. We'll be live again next Thursday.
And mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, um, let us know what else we can uh, do for you. Yeah, and uh, Steve, I just want to say I totally get what you're saying. And uh, yeah, Sandra feels the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You should see how we communicate with each other when he doesn't have his hearing aids on. And, uh, you know, there was a period where uh, part of the story, you might know this, where um, uh, Sajan's sister, Zog, well, she's just adorable, but she actually chewed his hearing aids before we went on vacation. And um, he couldn't talk, so I had to basically talk for him. And uh, we also said we might make some videos in the future where we're going to have different funny scenarios that happen in our everyday life when Serge doesn't want to mm -hmm. wear his hearing aids. <laughs> 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 but, uh, oh, I see people are joining in now. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, oh, thank you so much for the, for the awesome feedback, guys. We really, mm -hmm. really appreciate you. And... Um, yeah, have a wonderful evening, and uh, we'll uh, we'll obviously stay in touch. We'll see you next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, thanks for being with us, guys. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs> Bye.